If you're looking for a compact luxury crossover and you have sixty or seventy thousand dollars to spend, you have two really solid options in the all-new 2018 Audi SQ5 and the all-new 2018 Volvo XC60 T8. But these two vehicles couldn't be more different if they tried. Sure, this one's dark blue and this one's white, but the differences are more than just skin deep. Because under this hood, we find an all-new turbo 3-liter V6 engine, and under this hood, we find a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine with a turbocharger, a supercharger, and a plug-in hybrid system. This model will scoot from 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds, this model in 5.1 seconds, but we get lower fuel economy in this one, obviously, than we get in the Volvo. The Volvo has more luxury doodads and gizmos inside the cabin for this price tag, including massaging seats, a leather dashboard, and more comfortable seats overall, but the Audi SQ5 is really a corner carver when you get this out on your favorite winding mountain road. So which one is the right vehicle for you? Well, let's try and dive in and find that out. Up front, it's obvious that both the Audi and the Volvo come from Europe, because we get very European luxury car styling cues. The lines are elegant and restrained, there's nothing crazy going on up front, and we get very distinctive angry headlamps on both the Audi and the Volvo. In terms of overall length, both the Volvo and the Audi are almost exactly the same overall length. A lot of people don't seem to realize it, but they are both also about the same size as a Toyota RAV4 or a Nissan Rogue. And that's of course because these are both compact crossovers, not mid-sized crossovers. So these are about a half step smaller than something like a Lexus RX350. Out back, the Audi looks very much like the last generation SQ5, although we do get a little bit more pizzazz going on right here with the sequential LED turn signal lamp that definitely looks a little bit more interesting than just the plain blinking section that we find over here on the Volvo. Now on the camera, this may appear to be an amber turn signal, but in the United States, it is actually a red turn signal, just like we find over here on the Volvo. It's just the way the color balance appears on the camera. Over here on the Volvo, we have a design that's very similar to the last generation XC60 with this swooping tail lamp module that accentuates the hip going on here, and then it blends that with a little bit of Volvo S90 right down here. The rear end design of the Volvo is perhaps a little bit more traditional than we find on the Audi, because if we open the tailgate, you'll notice that the tail lamp modules actually stay in place, and over here on the Audi, they're actually part of the tailgate itself. When comparing interiors, the XC60 is definitely a nicer place to spend your time, especially if you can afford the upper end trims like we're driving right here. The inscription trim not only gets upgraded nappa leather seats with extending thigh cushions that are powered and of course front seat massage for both the driver and the front passenger, but also a leather wrapped dashboard and overall a slightly higher attention to detail. When it comes to gadgets, the Audi definitely wins this race with their absolutely gorgeous large LCD instrument cluster. The XC60 does get a full LCD instrument cluster as well, but we don't see Google Maps satellite imagery and the graphics are just not as adjustable or entertaining as we find in this Audi digital cockpit design. The digital cockpit design is also of course sitting right behind Audi's very gorgeous flat bottom steering wheel. It's not quite as comfortable to hold as the Volvo steering wheel, but it definitely looks a little sportier. In addition to the very attractive Google satellite imagery we find in this LCD instrument cluster with full traffic information as you can see right there, we also have the same sort of display going on in the Audi MMI screen. The two displays can be adjusted independently of one another. We also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration in this MMI screen, but it is a little bit more difficult to interact with because this is not a touchscreen. You actually have to use the rotary joystick controller in order to interact with CarPlay. As I said at the beginning, things couldn't be more different under the hood. In the Volvo here, we have a two liter four cylinder turbocharged and supercharged engine. It produces 316 horsepower by itself. And then we have an 87 horsepower electric motor in the back that gives us 400 horsepower total and over 470 pound-feet of torque. Like other Volvos, this is a transverse engine, which means the four cylinders are in a line right across the front of the vehicle. Instead of a mechanical all-wheel drive system, all 316 horsepower plus a 47 horsepower electric motor send power to the front wheels only. The only power going to the back is provided by an 87 horsepower electric motor. Over here we have a twin turbo 3 liter V6 engine producing 354 horsepower. This is mated to an 8 speed longitudinal mounted transmission, which means the engine is lined up north south in the vehicle and the transmission is actually somewhat back here, sort of right between the front passenger and driver's legs. Audi's Quattro system is of course standard in the SQ5 and it's going to send 60% of that power mechanically to the rear wheels under normal situations and it can direct whatever power it wants to the front wheels whenever necessary. Although this appears to have much less power and much less torque under the hood, keep in mind that this is going to be lighter because it doesn't have a 10 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack hanging around. 
The Volvo has an all-electric range of around 18 miles thanks to its over 10 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. And of course, there's no electric range in the SQ5. Out on the road, the XC60 and the SQ5 are very different vehicles, even though they both have a 0 to 60 performance mission. Let's start out with the numbers here in the Volvo. This model went from 0 to 60 in an absolutely blistering 4.9 seconds. That's very, very good for a luxury compact crossover. At the moment, the only vehicles that are faster than this are the new Alfa Romeo Stelvio with their insane 510 horsepower engine under the hood, and of course, the Porsche Macan in its top end trim, but those are both going to be considerably more expensive than the Volvo XC60. Of course, Mercedes is planning on dropping their over 500 horsepower engine under the hood of the GLC 63. We should be seeing that in the next few months in the US. And so this is going to drop down to about fourth place relatively quickly. But 4.9 seconds is still very quick, and it's actually quicker than the SQ5. According to Audi, the SQ5 will go from 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds, and that's exactly the time we got when we tested that model out here. However, you do have to brake torque the SQ5 in order to get that 5.1 second 0 to 60. If you don't, then it ends up being about 2 to 3 tenths of a second slower. The way the two vehicles deliver power is quite different. The SQ5 has a very raw feel to it. The engine note is very good. It sounds like an awful lot of acceleration is going on, and it actually presses you back in your seat seemingly a little bit harder than the Volvo. The Volvo, on the other hand, the shifts are a little bit slower. Things are a little bit more relaxed under the hood, but because of the electric motors, you're actually going from zero to 60 faster. And that acceleration difference can be just a little bit deceptive. Thanks to the lighter curb weight and the grippier tires we get in the SQ5, the braking wind definitely goes to the Audi. The handling win also goes to the Audi because of the extra curb weight. I am sitting right next to a large lithium ion battery right here. But the difference in handling is a little bit more complicated than that because it has to do with the way the vehicles apply power. This Volvo is sending the majority of its power to the front axle at all times because we don't have a mechanical all-wheel drive system like we find in the XC60 T6. That means the front axle is always getting around 300 horsepower, maybe even about 320, whereas the rear axle can only ever get 87 horsepower. That's a pretty big power bias towards the front. That means that under acceleration, we can get a little bit of torque steer out of the XC60. And it also means that if you're on a less than perfect surface, you're gonna get a little bit of front wheel peel, and you definitely don't get that in the SQ5. The SQ5 may have a front heavyweight bias like the XC60, so they're going to be very similar in terms of neutral handling dynamics, but it's going to send the majority of its power to the rear axle. So power on, the SQ5 is definitely going to be the handling winner. Even if you were to put grippier tires on the XC60 in neutral handling situations, this is still going to come a little bit behind the Audi. Hopping into the SQ5, you'll immediately notice that this is a more performance-oriented vehicle than the XC60 T8. We have that turbo V6 engine under the hood, the exhaust note is quite different, and it has a very definite bark when it changes gears. But more than that, the overall feel of the SQ5 is a little bit different. Now both this SQ5 and the XC60 we've been testing have the optional adaptive air suspensions. But even though they both have adaptive air suspensions, their tuning is quite different. This is tuned towards the sportier side of things, the XC60 is tuned towards the softer and more comfortable end of the spectrum. Both vehicles have a relatively similar amount of body roll and a relatively similar weight balance as well. The balance, of course, is that the XC60 does better when it comes to the overall ride score. It's just a more comfortable vehicle if you're going to take a long highway trip than the SQ5. Cabin noise is fairly equal between the two vehicles, but there is a little bit more engine noise in the XC60. And that engine noise is a little less pleasing than the twin turbo V6 that we find under this hood. When it comes to fuel economy, there's no contest. The XC60 clearly wins. You can easily get 50% better fuel economy in the XC60 T8 than in this SQ5 right here. Of course, Volvo's plug-in hybrid system is not your typical plug-in hybrid, so it's not trying really to be an EV at lower speeds. In general, that hybrid system is better seen as augmenting the gasoline engine because in average daily driving, the engine really is going to turn on quite frequently, but it's going to give you better fuel economy overall than if you hadn't plugged it in at all. That means that in your daily driving mix, you could easily be getting 60, 70, or even 90 miles per gallon total, depending on the length of your trip, except that some of your fuel consumption would also be electricity, and so you would have to factor that in as far as your overall cost of driving. Bottom line out on the road, the SQ5 is quite simply more fun to drive, but the XC60 is going to be more comfortable, so it really depends on your priorities. If you're after the most fun, then definitely get the SQ5. If you're after the latest in infotainment gadgets, definitely get this one because we have that gorgeous LCD instrument 
smart cluster right in there with the moving map display that features Google satellite imagery. We don't find that in the Volvo, even though it does have an LCD instrument cluster as well. But if you're looking for the vehicle with the latest in active safety systems, then the XC60 takes a lead over the SQ5. The XC60 features Volvo's latest pilot assist system, which is a semi-autonomous driving system at relatively lower speeds, although it now includes highway speeds as well. It also has their latest version of their city safety system, and there are a few other safety features that are standard and optional. It's probably no coincidence, but the Volvo and the Audi are priced almost identically. The Volvo has a sticker price of $71,000 as we have been driving it. This Audi, $65,000. However, the Audi does not qualify for a federal tax credit, and you will get $5,000 back if you buy the Volvo. You also will have access to the carpool lane solo if you live in California. The two vehicles are quite different, however, and it really depends on what you're after. The Volvo is more comfortable, it's more luxurious, it's also a little bit quicker 0-60, to 60, but this will definitely get you around a corner faster. A lot of that has to do with the tires that Audi has chosen to put on the SQ5. This particular model has much grippier rubber, even though they are basically the same size as the tires we find on the Volvo. It doesn't help that, of course, the Volvo is about 500 pounds heavier than the Audi over here. Driving dynamics are also quite different, because this will put the majority of its power to the rear axle. The Volvo puts the majority of its power to the front axle. Now again, that's a little different than the Volvo without the hybrid system, which can send power 50-50 front-rear, assuming no wheel slip. This will always be putting about 87 horsepower to the rear and about 320 to the front. It might sound like a cop-out, but I'm going to call it a tie between the Audi SQ5 and the Volvo XC60 T8. They both really appeal to my sensibilities. I love the gadgets that we find in the Audi. That gorgeous LCD instrument cluster really is an incredible piece of technology and probably a reason to buy the SQ5 all by itself as of course is the absolutely glorious sound that we get from the turbo six cylinder engine. Although this engine sounds better, however, this hybrid drivetrain will actually get you from zero to 60 faster. The Volvo is also more comfortable inside. It has a nicer put together interior. And of course we get the massaging front seats for about the same price as what we find over here on the Audi side. And of course, because I live in California, access to the carpool lane without another person in the car is a really big selling point for the XC60. Be sure and let me know what you think about these two compact crossovers down there in the comments section below. Also, be sure to stay tuned for the complete review on the Q5 coming up very soon. We will have the regular Q5 without the S for a complete week. And of course, stay tuned for a complete look at the Volvo XC60 coming up in the next month or so. I'll see you next week.